meter chaos this morning and delays for the day as high levels of water brought services to a standstill. The Met Office says we should be braced for more of this. Forget summer, they say. It's going... But the evidence in the record now is becoming clearer and clearer than ever assume the temperature of the world. The average American, that carbon footprint is about 16 tons of carbon emissions. <laughs> The state of the planet is really dire. We have ample scientific evidence today that we are at nothing less than a planetary emergency. We have a global climate crisis, but we also have a global ecological crisis. And the ecological crisis undermines the resilience of the whole planet, which means that when we continue to emit greenhouse gases, burning fossil fuels and degrading ecosystems, we are coming very close to tipping points, which would lead to irreversible changes that would commit all future generations to a planet that would drift off irreversibly towards a lesser and lesser state to support human livelihoods. So all in all, we are today at a point of existential challenge. And this is now well established scientifically through the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change 6 report, that concludes 1.1 degrees Celsius warming, the point we've reached now through fossil fuel burning and land use change, is the warmest temperature on Earth for the last 100,000 years, which means that we have crashed through the ceiling of the warmest global mean temperature on Earth since we left the last ice age, which means since we started developing civilizations as we know it. So fundamentally, we can say that the state of the planet that has supported but what we cherish as a modern world today is surpassed in terms of the capacity of the Earth system to sustain that pressure. The first challenge for us in terms of responding to the existential risks we're facing is that we need to take a whole systems approach and understand that we cannot think of the climate crisis as only phasing out fossil fuels or think of food systems as only saving pollinators or think of health as only being a question of clean air or clean water. We need to now navigate and be stewards of all the planetary boundaries, the nine big systems that we know scientifically regulate the stability and the resilience of the entire planet. So that is number one, that we have to stay within a safe operating space defined by science for climate, for biodiversity, for land, for fresh water, for the big nutrient cycles of nitrogen and phosphorus, but also pollution and the waste and all the chemicals that we're loading into the Earth system. So interestingly, we today have so much 
scientific support for this transition in terms of what's the corridor within which we have to stay. So that, I would argue, is the number one. Number two is that we have to understand that this is not an incremental journey anymore. This is an exponential journey. It's about transforming societies, behaviors, values, and lifestyles, the world economy, quite frankly, in one generation. The modern economy, which is built on economic growth, is powered by cheap energy. And the cheap energy comes from fossil fuels. So it's a remarkable success story. If you look back at it, before we started hitting the tipping points and starting to really fill up the atmosphere with too much greenhouse gases, you could argue that this unsustainable venture served us quite well, you know? It kind of gave really rapid human wealth creation, particularly for those who were lucky to be in the industrialized countries who stepped onto that journey. But now we've come to the end of that road. And when did we come to the end of the road? Well, we came to the end of the road, we think scientifically. Sometimes, you know, we passed 350 ppm, the climate planetary boundary, basically 1990. So it's the last 30 years that we have shifted over from this big resilient planet that could cope with the unsustainable pressures that basically subsidized our wealth into this phase where it no longer works. And now we are hitting the ceiling. We've been so long in this negative trend that now the invoices are starting to be sent back into the economies and we're starting to feel it. So the crisis and challenge is now. It's not far in the future, neither in terms of impact nor in terms of action. But the good news is, which is also such an extraordinary development, which has advanced at the same time step just over the last few years, is that we today have so much evidence that the solutions are not only available, but they're also scalable, and they are competitive, and they moreover give better outcomes for us humans in terms of jobs and economy, for sure, but also in terms of health. When you go to solar and wind, clean energy systems, you clean up air, you have much, much better outcomes for human health, and you quite frankly also build up better human resilience to potential of future pandemics. So you have you know, investments in a much more robust and healthy future by moving towards these now available solutions. So what leads to pessimism? Well, it is that we do not see that all the countries in the world have stepped up and aligned their national mitigation plans with science. We know that we are moving along a pathway that will take us far beyond two degrees, up to three degrees Celsius warming just by the end of this century. So that is a huge concern. Now, my message though, despite sharing that concern, is that we should never give up. I mean, every tenth of a degree matters. And it's not, a, it's not an excuse at all to say, look here, my assessment is that I don't believe the political leadership will deliver, so we will lose the Paris target and therefore I will lean back and not, not engage. It's on the contrary, holding the line as much as we ever can and that every tenth of a degree will reduce the amount of extreme events, droughts, floods, fires, disease, impacts we will be feeling, makes it worth all the way. And I would also like to, again, kind of emphasize the fact that we, we are sitting, you know, that, that's, that's what's, in, in a sense, the fundamentally most important element here, that we know, actually, I would even argue we know that we're sitting on the winning narrative. We, we know that the 
sustainable, clean future is the only one that can give us the healthy, secure, future, wealth-creating agenda we want. If you really want to deliver the sustainable development goals, it cannot be done with the current food system, with the current energy system, with the current way we are producing, consuming, and creating waste. It will never deliver for 10 billion people. It's impossible. So it's either we go sustainable or we completely fail.